purpose of this video is to show you how to create a project schedule in Microsoft Project. I'm using Project 2010, but Project 2013 works very much the same. <coughs> so don't let the difference in the interface confuse you. Everything's pretty much in the same position. Um, to start off with, you should have watched video one, and video one indicates, um, tells you how to set up Microsoft Project. You start by going to File or and then Options. And then up comes a screen, and my system's being a little slow here, but up comes a screen, and on that screen what you do is you make sure that by default all tasks in the task mode right here are what are called auto-scheduled. And when they're auto-scheduled, what that means is that Microsoft Project will automatically set the dates that, that tasks start and finish without you having to enter those in yourself. So we go here to auto scheduled to make sure that new tasks are always auto scheduled and we also go here to make sure it says fixed duration and that this is unchecked new tasks are effort driven we uncheck splitting progress tasks and we don't make tasks always honor their constraint dates um, and uh, then we go back to OK and that will make sure that uh, we're set up properly if you want more detail on all that see video 1 so here in uh, video two, what we're going to do is start with a project that involves overhauling and testing two machines and then running them side by side to make sure they feed information to each or feed product to each other successfully. And you start off simply by typing in every heading you want to use in your project, every task, every milestone, all to be explained in a minute. I'm going to start off like this. I'm going to call this the two machine project. This will eventually be our project summary task. And then I'm going to have all the tasks associated with machine one. That will also be a summary task to the project summary task. And then here's where the actual work gets going on. First thing we're going to do is we're going to overhaul machine one. And then we're going to test machine one. And then we're going to put in a milestone here that, miles, that machine one is complete. And I pressed enter and it's waiting for Microsoft Project to respond. There we go. Now milestones have a zero duration, so I'm going to put that in there. These durations will update later on. Now machine two has similar. We have to overhaul machine two, meaning we have to take it apart, grease everything up, and then we have to put it back together again and then test machine two. And when that's done, uh, machine two is complete and that will be a milestone for us eventually and then the next thing we have to do is we have to test the two machines in line and then our project is complete actually I'm going to put a milestone in there testing complete and then project complete maybe overkill but what the heck okay so now we have all this typed in and we need to uh, now outline the project so that that everything um, is summarized properly because you want your project to read almost like an essay with headings and subheadings etc so the first thing we would want to do is we want to make the two machine project at the top here the project summary task so you go over to the left side where these line numbers are highlight everything go to the task menu and then click on the green indent button look what happens when I do that See how it makes the two machine project the project summary task? Eventually it'll summarize information here as to when the, it, the project starts and when it finishes. So it provides you with kind of the top line of the whole, of the whole project. Uh, my system is now slow again. I can't do anything. Okay, here we go. Now what we do, I'm going to put this back so you're not distracted. And I'm going to now outline overhaul machine one and machine two and machine one complete and I'm going to make those go underneath machine one so that machine one becomes a bold summary task. So you highlight all the tasks you want to be under that summary task just like we did with the main, main uh, project summary task. And then we hit this indent button. Then we do it the same here for machine two. And indent. So now do you see how this these tasks here have become summary tasks or outlines? Uh, this is not a summary task. It's only one one task. But I can indent testing complete, and then project is complete here. Okay. Now um, one thing. Uh, I made that a milestone. It should be at its default of one day. By the way. Okay. 
And notice this. This is another common mistake. Um, for some reason, when we made that change, this became an, a manually scheduled task. Be on your lookout for those and change them to auto scheduled if they come up. You should never have any green icons in here. They should always look like this. So that's another mistake most people make when they're new to Microsoft Project. Okay, so that now that we've got um, all that in there, what we want to do is we want to add uh, predecessors to each of these tasks. These are immediate predecessors, meaning tasks that come immediately before the next task or the task that you happen to be on. So for example, the only tasks that will have predecessors are going to be milestones and then these tasks in here which are the individual activities. So when I overhaul machine one, um, that there's no no predecessor to that. I, there's every project starts with a you know every journey starts with a first step. Well, this is the first step. There is no predecessor. This is you can just go in and start doing it. However, if you want to test machine one, you have to overhaul machine one. So I'm going to put a three here, and you see how that put an arc down to the test machine activity, showing the order that these occur in, and then this machine. Uh, one's overhaul and test is complete um, after task four over here testing machine one is complete so I'm gonna put a four there and see how that pushed the milestone out like that now milestones have predecessors but they don't act as predecessors themselves summary tasks like these they never have predecessors either so never put a predecessor next to a summary task the only things that get linked together are the items that are not bolded in your project. And uh, then what we do is we go to overhaul machine 2 and we say well we can start overhauling machine 2 without any predecessors either that's something we can just start doing but we have to have overhaul machine 2 completed before we can test machine 2 and that's task 7 for overhaul machine 2. So we'll put a 7 here which then shows that we can't test machine 2 until we've overhauled it. And then what we do is we say machine 2 is complete when task 8 is done, test machine 2, and then that puts that milestone out here just like that. Okay. Now, um, the next thing we want to do is we want to, oh, okay, I know there's, this is good. This really, I shouldn't have bolded this for you. I'm going to take that off, and I'm going to put it back to its default of one day. And I'm not going to put that milestone in there. It's confusing the whole issue. And notice when I made that change, this became auto schedule, uh, manually scheduled. Make sure it goes back to auto scheduled. Okay, testing in line is there, and then project complete is there as well. We can't test in line, however, until uh, we've tested machine one, which means task three has to be done, and we've tested machine two, which means task eight right here is also completed. So we put an eight right here. And notice how we didn't put the milestones as predecessors for testing in line. We didn't put machine one complete, which is task five, as the predecessor. We put task, um, and it should have been actually four here, sorry about that. Task four, test machine one, is the predecessor to testing in line. And task eight, testing machine two, is the predecessor to testing in line. These these um, summary tasks and these milestones right here, like that and that, are just there to you know, structure your project and, and allow you to use different views to condense the project for people to look at. So they don't represent the work of the project. So we don't use any of them um, to create the project schedule. So remember, milestones have predecessors, but they never act as predecessors to other tasks. And summary tasks like this, this, and this never ever have predecessors and are not linked up in any way. They're only there to outline the project. Last thing, the project is complete after we've tested in line, so I'm going to put 10 there. That's another common mistake as I see the final project milestone just sitting right here at the far left without any task linked up to it. Okay, so now we have the beginnings of a project schedule, but we're not quite done yet because if you have any tasks that have a question mark next to them, it means you haven't physically typed in how long that task is. The default is one, and Microsoft Project reminds you that, hey, you haven't actually typed in a number here. So um, 
even if your task is one day long, you should still put a one in there yourself so that it gets rid of the question mark. Otherwise, I will think you've made a mistake and so will others. So let's just uh, give some numbers here. We would have gotten this from the project team, but let's say it takes four days to overhaul machine one. And it takes um, three days to test it. See how that lengthened the bars over here? And then let's say overhauling machine two is a much more involved process. It takes six days to overhaul it in you know another six days to to test it. And then the test in line is two days. And that's the project. And you can see now we've got this big schedule going on here with milestones. It's outlined with bars at the top. And if we want to see the whole thing, sometimes you get a really big project and you can't see the entire project. Go to Zoom, go to Entire Project, and then click on OK, and that will make it so you can see just about everything all in one screen. OK, so at this point, now we have our project, and I'm going to, you know, when everything should start and when it should end, you can see that all of the, the, the entire project should start on the 12th of, of October, and it ends on the 29th. And if I don't like that start date, maybe I want to start it today, I'm, or some other day, I would go to um, project, go to project information, and then make the start date whatever date I want it to be. So let's pretend we're back in time and it's August 2nd that we want to start the project on. Click on OK. And see what it did? It changed all the dates to that start date. And I'm going to zoom in to the entire project so it'll center itself and I can see the entire project when each milestone is achieved and when each task starts and finished finishes. But I'm still not done yet because I need to know what the critical path is. So I go to the Format tab and I click on Critical Tasks. And what that does, it puts in red the longest path. This is the path that if it's any tasks on this are late, then the whole project will be late. Tasks on this path are non-critical, meaning that if they're late, they still won't delay the whole project because there's there's slack right here. This slack means time that these tasks can be delayed or they're kind of waiting for this test machine two task to be done. When if these tasks are delayed, it won't delay the whole project. But if any of these three are delayed, it will delay the whole project. That's the critical path. So now we know what's most important to manage. Now, one question people ask is, um, you know, what if I don't like when this project's going to finish? In fact, you already have milestones probably in your project charter that say that, you know, maybe machine one has to be done on a certain date and machine two has to be done on a certain date. Let's say you've missed the date for machine two in this project schedule. You were told by your sponsor that this needs to be, um, machine two needs to be done on the 15th. Well, what I you might be tempted to go in here and change this to the 15th, right? But you don't do that. Instead, let the auto scheduling feature handle that for you. Just go to here. Instead of giving the uh, people who do testing machine two six days, give them four days. Oops, and what that did is that deleted it to the 15th. Let's make it five then. 16th. Okay, well, it looks like of the two that we're only going to get either the 16th or the 14th, probably because these bars right here represent the weekend as non-working time. And I'm going to deal with that in another uh, video. However, what I would do is we want to hit that milestone date, so I'm going to change this to four days. And then we'll be done a couple days early, and we'll hit the milestone. So remember, if you don't like any of these dates, the project finish date, you know, the milestone for completing machine two, you shorten up the critical path Ta activities in order to achieve those milestones like we did right here. And that shows you how to how to um, create a schedule that you can then manage. Now I want to go over a couple mistakes that people make as well. Um, number one is they do link up summary tasks. Like they might go like this and say, well I can't you know I can't start on uh, on uh, machine two until I'm done machine one so I'm going to go to put a two here see how that created a line that adds nothing to the schedule because what makes the summary task are the tasks under it so that you shouldn't do what I just did so take it off um, the other problem is what I call dangling nodes for example 
this is a dangling node. Do you see how this task right here, test machine one, it does go down to a milestone, but it doesn't link into any later task in the project network. That's a dangling node. So you have to go and look and see whether you have any bars that don't have arcs that feed into other later tasks. The only task that should have no arrow um, coming out of it would would be your last task, and even then that's to a milestone. So look for tasks that don't feed into other tasks. So in this case I'm going to put that back again and testing machine 1 is 4. See how that now has a line that comes out to a later task? Make sure that you have no dangling nodes. The other bit of confusion people have is why the project, the summary, um, the project itself is only 12 days long. When you add up machine 1 is 7 days and machine 2 is 10 days, that should mean 17 days, right? Well, no, it doesn't because machine 1's work overlaps with machine 2's work. See, while machine 2 is being worked on, then machine 1 is also being worked on. So this figure here is the total project duration, not the sum of all the durations of the summary tasks or the tasks under it. Now in this case, 4 plus 3 does happen to add up to 7. However, that's only because these tasks are sequential. If I had another task in here, maybe something that was happening at the same time as this, and it was shorter, maybe it was only one day, that wouldn't add one day to the machine one task because that is absorbed in the total length of the path. It's only what the total length of the path is, not the sum of all the activities within the path, which may overlap at times. That's another point of confusion. And the last thing is, again, don't ever let this happen where you've got a manually scheduled task in there because you want Microsoft Project to automatically update dates. Now, that's pretty much how you create your schedule. There's one other view that's kind of nice. Here we go, view, table, schedule. And what this does is this gives you the early start, the early finish, the late start, and the late finish of every task and whether there's any slack. Slack refers to how much an activity can be late before it will delay the project. Well, um, all of these um, tasks that have zero on them are critical tasks, and they're going to be in red. If they're late, the whole project's late. If any tasks have a number here, it means they can be delayed this much. In this case, overhaul machine one can be delayed three days without delaying the entire path. I will often just give this section in a screenshot right here to a project team. I never give them the late start and late finish or else they'll use it because they don't get it done on time. But if I just give them this, then, um, then that can be a way of presenting your project to others. More on that in, in uh, video three, which is how to actually display the project to other people. Uh, but that gives you an overview about how to create a project schedule, and I hope that helps. Thank you.